The latest CBS News Nation Tracker polls have new numbers on some of the most important issues facing the U.S. Among the findings, nearly one third of Americans believe the nation is headed for another world war. Let's bring in Anthony Salvanto, CBS News Director of Elections and Surveys. All right, Anthony, let us start with that poll on the U.S. heading towards war. How do the divisions about how President Trump is approaching international crises affect people's concerns about war? Well, you see not only that question, but also not a lot of confidence in how the president is handling the situation with North Korea in particular. Um, a lot of people feel that war with North Korea could be avoidable. Um, still a majority feel that, but you do see this large number, some who say yes, and an even larger number who say maybe, they can't rule it out, that another global conflict could be coming. And those divisions and how you see the president do dovetail with this in that it is his strongest supporters who think that things will be okay, but there's a lot of people among his opponents who don't like the way he's handling things, and they're the ones who are the most likely to be the most concerned about the way that things are going now. Let's talk about um, the domestic agenda here. There's been talk about a rift between the president and congressional Republicans in terms of implementing an agenda. How does the public feel about this? Well, you know, you still see large numbers, even among his strongest supporters, mm -hmm. who want that deal maker in chief, mm -hmm. who want him to reach out. They don't mind the idea of him making deals with Democrats. They don't. They don't. Mm -hmm. um, even among his strongest supporters, many of them are okay, as long as he doesn't give too much away. Mm -hmm. What exactly that would be in giving right. too much away, you know, the devil's in the details, details right. <laughs> but, uh, but in any event, they don't. And you also see that a bulk of Republicans say that they still want the two sides, if there are two sides, to work together. And I say that sort of purposefully because not everybody sees the rift between the so-called establishment and Donald Trump. Some do, his most, his most ardent supporters do, but that's not the entire Republican Party. So you see these still large numbers who say they should all just work together, and a small percentage, you know, about one in 10, who, who hear the word establishment and go, oh, that's a Washington term, mm. right? That's mm -hmm. what people talk about in the Beltway, but mm -hmm. that's not what the rest of America is using as a label. Yeah, they're pretty vocal percentage, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the president campaigned as a champion of the middle class and was elected as a result in part of because of that. Do Americans think the president is living up to his promises when it comes to the latest tax framework? The latest tax framework is seen across the board as possibly favoring the wealthy mm. um, in particular. And there's a smaller percentage that thinks that it would favor the middle class only or treat everybody equally. And this is important going forward. I mean, the, what he's got to do, because so many people, and you still see it in the polling, are looking for that, in particular, that middle class boost. They still have to draw, apparently, that connection between what tax reform would do and what it could do to help regular or middle class people. And that's particularly important because also in this poll, a large number of folks, including a large number of Trump supporters, say that the U.S. economy in general favors the wealthy. Hmm. So there's this larger concern about there, about, about out there, about the way things work. Right. And then does tax reform start to reverse that overall concern, or wow. does it just add to it? I think is the real framework going forward. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch if the president actually goes out as a result of perhaps seeing some of this data, not just our poll, but others, that maybe he'll go out to these Rust Belt states and try and promote this tax agenda in a way that you know, he has gone out there, but some would say he needs to go out there more aggressively. All right, finally, let's talk about gun laws. They have been debated extensively in the wake of the Las Vegas massacre. Where do Americans stand when it comes to changing those laws? Well, as polls have shown for a long time, there is a substantial portion of Americans that would say ban or put limits on assault weapons. Mm -hmm. And there is a substantial par portion who say that gun laws could be made more strict. But it's how we frame the debate that really defines this. And so you ask people, what is, what are gun laws about? Right. And on both sides, people say it's about personal safety. Uh, for people who own guns in particular, they say it's about freedom. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's a, there's a lot of talking past each other in this regard, um, you know, because people both see the debate as affecting them personally. Wow. It's just a question of what can you do about it? And then a lot of folks say that, yes, the availability of guns can contribute to violence, but also that violent culture uh, can do that. Um, people who have uh, mental, um, you know, people who have just, you know, aren't aren't thinking straight, mm -hmm. um, can can you know can contribute to that as well. Mm -hmm. So there's this real real landscape 
of things that are, the, are wrapped up in the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and for a lot of folks, it's not just about access and, av and availability. Yeah, yeah, really fascinating to see some of those um, percentages that you put up there. It really is a variety of concerns that people have under the umbrella of quote unquote gun laws. Exactly. All right, Anthony Salvanto, thanks so much. Always great to see you. Thanks, Elaine.